Hello and welcome back to my channel, Miami Star Tarot. I am Natalia Roos and I am going to be doing a timeless love reading, love messages for my air signs, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Today I will be using uh, Tarot in Wonderland by Barbara Moore. This was a gift from my daughter, Ariel. Thank you, Ariel. And um, anyways, yeah, she gave me the tarot cards. They're gorgeous tarot cards. As you can see, they have some wear and tear already. I've been using them a lot since I got them about a week and a half ago. So thank you, honey. And anyways, I will put the box back, put it away, out of the way. And we will be using the uh, Tarot in Wonderland tarot deck, and we will be using the Romance uh, Oracles as well for just a little boost to the reading. I will start by shuffling out three um, Oracle cards, one for each sign, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And then I will, um, from there, I will focus on each sign using the tarot deck. Oops. Uh, Gemini, this one's for you, popped out. Calling in your soulmate. Let's see what comes out for Libra. If something does not pop out, I might just shuffle the traditional way. So Libra, what is calling you? Let's try a couple more shuffles and I will pull it out, do one shuffle and pull the card. Let's see what's coming out for air signs for Libra. True love. This is the romance of a lifetime and Aquarius for giving and learning. All right. So I will read the details when we get to each of the signs. So we are going to start our reading, and I've said it before, like when I'm looking at my camera, I can't tell what direction to go. It's like the opposite direction, which is not my natural way that I want to lean toward. Anyways, okay, so I will put this away right there, and we will start our reading with Gemini. All right, so I will move these two away. Gemini, you have calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together, okay? So this could be with a soulmate you already have. It could be maybe a soulmate that you're looking for. We'll find out. Of course, readings don't resonate with every single Gemini out there or Libra or Aquarius. If it does not resonate with you, then look for next week and hopefully one of those will. It is so hard to hit every single person in the zodiac sign every time. Sometimes parts of the reading might resonate. And of course the readings are always meant as guidance, not as this is what's gonna happen and that's that, okay? Of course things change, I can make a reading and one little thing you do can change the whole, even if it's resonating with you, it could change everything, so. Oh my goodness. Life moves on every second and new things can happen. And I like to call this timeless because I feel that it could, if it's meant for you, it's meant for you when you watch it. It activates when you watch it. And I always feel sometimes when things do resonate with me that when they do resonate, that it was meant for me at that time. So, and that's why I feel like timeless sometimes is not a good word, but it, it does kind of like match with situations sometimes. So I think timeless can be applied to some of these readings. All right, here we go. One more, Gemini. Let's see what's going on with Gemini. Cut the deck. I will pull a card for you, for them and for the outcome, but it doesn't always work that way. The cards say what they wanna say, but that's just in my head how I look at it. Like that's why I pull certain cards and I will pull a clarifier as well. All right, Gemini calling in your soulmate. You've got the seven of wands. You are going to be defending yourself 
or your beliefs or your stance, wherever it is that you are. You got the Four of Pentacles. You are going to be protecting something. And you got the Hanged Man. You are definitely, definitely going to need to bring in that soulmate to help you out. It looks like, Gemini, you are in a situation, in a position where you may need to start calling in, praying or doing something, calling for affirmations because you have the Seven of Wands, the Four of Pentacles, both which are more like protective type of energies and attitudes and the way you, you focus on things. And you will have to put yourself in, I like to call it like, it's the hanged man, so you will see right there. It's I'm not saying you need to go hang by your, is it your right foot? By your left foot to think about it, but you may have to put yourself in a position where you are thinking outside of the box, okay? Something is calling for a fresh viewpoint, a new perspective, and possibly this is where you might be calling in your soulmate to bring you together maybe you are not necessarily giving in to your soulmate and that could be what's causing. So the Four of Pentacles is an energy where you are hoarding, being, it's, a, it's the miser's card and it's not always a miserly with money, but it could be miserly with your feelings, miserly with information, miserly with, with resources that you are just keeping it to yourself. And normally that stems from more of a situation where you're feeling like you need to protect yourself or keep it for yourself so that you don't run out. Or you're trying to protect your, your dignity sometimes, your feelings, so you're withholding information. So there is something, um, Gemini, that you are withholding, and it looks like that is you are not giving to your soulmate right now. So if it's a person that you're already with, then maybe you need to take a step back, maybe step out of your comfort zone. Maybe, you know, the hanged man is hanging upside down. He put himself there because he's trying to figure out what do I do next? What am I not seeing? Maybe if I hang upside down, the blood rushes to my head. It creates um, a new perspective for me looking at things in a way you've never looked at them before. So maybe you are in a situation where you are trying to figure out, is this person somebody I want to give my all to? And I'm curious to know why you are in that situation. Now, roles can be reversed and it could be a situation where the other person is doing that, okay? So you kind of apply this information where it goes into your life. It could be, and if I say you, 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 remember you can always reverse that, okay? Um, so I'm gonna pull the clarifying card and you got the page of wands. There is definitely somebody bringing you some passion, some uh, energy of, I want to be with you, let's try to, begin something. The page of wands, wands are creative, fiery, passionate energies, and it could be about um, activities that you like to do. Let's say if you're an avid uh, hiker, like you like going hiking, that's that's your passion. Maybe you like to go bicycling, whatever. It's all about passions, and it could also be about passions of the heart, okay? And in this case, I am looking at this as a person that is maybe not entirely in your life the way they would like to be, and they're trying to get in there. I'm thinking, um, again, I'm gonna use the word you, that you are not <coughs> being very open and sharing with this person for whatever reason. You are feeling the need to conserve yourself. And I'm not sure why that is. It could be maybe a past experience that you've had. You're not sure you wanna open up to love but you need to call in your soulmate. Gemini, <coughs> I'm sorry. I have a dry throat. I've been doing a lot of readings. Um, so yeah, Gemini, it looks like you need to get out of your comfort zone and look at your relationship in a new perspective. 
I think this person is a good person for you. This might actually be your soulmate. So I would seriously consider why you're holding back, why you feel on defense, why you're pushing them away, and what you could do to make that feeling less and how they could help you through it. <coughs> All right, Gemini, that is your message. And it looks like the person that's there is a good one. I wouldn't turn it down. Open up a little bit, little by little, and see what happens. All right, Gemini, I hope this resonates. I will put these back in the deck. Put this one back in the stack. Next is Libra. Libra, true love. This is the romance of a lifetime. So maybe you are in the romance of a lifetime. Maybe you're finding the romance of a lifetime. Oops. <coughs> oh gosh, I, I have not noticed how much I need to have a glass of water next to me when I do these readings. Hopefully I won't have to interrupt them. Interrupt the reading to go get a glass of water. All right, Libra, let's find out. Oh, see, these cards are so hard to shuffle. They're very thin, so. All right, true love, true love. Let's do a couple more shadows. Get a good mixture in there. I think this is a very beautiful card. I'm gonna let you look at it for a minute. It's very romantic. I like how the angel is just hanging out in the background. All right, <clears throat> the cards. All right, Libra, let's see what you got. Page of Pentacles, a message of, I say it's more like a message of good fortune, good love. Pentacles are uh, signs of um, longevity. You've got the Queen of Pentacles. And you've got the Three of Pentacles. This is a beautiful spread for you right now, Libra. So it looks like you have a message. And it could be... So if you're not in a relation... <clears throat> let me take that back. If you are not in a marriage, let's say, or a living situation where you've been with someone for a very long time, that will come your way, okay? And it looks like with the Queen of Pentacles, you got all pentacles. So whatever it is that is going on in your life, it is there to stay. It's longevity, it is stability, and it is the real deal, okay? And I agree with this card. Whatever situation you're in, it is true love, okay? Now, the Queen of Pentacles is a, a, an energy that says it's inside, like internal love, internal um, feel, your feelings. Like the Queen internalizes things and she thinks. And again, there's really no true gender in any of this, but I, I do like to hold some traits, I guess, for the genders. You have Page of Pentacles, which is messages coming in things you need to know and it's all about like your your home life it's about being stable it's also financial success you got the queen which is all about love and you know she's like the ultimate giver of love and it's also longevity in a relationship and you have the three of pentacles which is working together to build that home and to keep that security going so you have got a really good thing going here libra Okay, it definitely is the, the romance of a lifetime. And if you are not married, this person is definitely the person that you're... I hate saying this definitively because, again, I said earlier, with tarot, anything can change tomorrow. You do something, they do something, the wheel of destiny turns and starts all over again. It could happen. But as of right now, this person that you are dealing with is the real deal. If you've been married a long time, then you're probably going to die together. And that's always a good thing to hear. You don't, you don't want to think about dying, but 
this is the real deal. This is your home right here. This is your, your love and your marriage. Sorry, my cat's in the video now. Your marriage and your stability and true love. Okay, this really gives that, uh, that assurance that what, whatever it is, whatever type of relationship you're in, if you're married or you're in a long-term relationship or you're even thinking, is this person the right person? Absolutely. You could not have gotten a better spread. To be honest, um, you know, you always want the lovers, you want the two of cups, but you know what? There's nothing like pentacles to give you that longevity and that stability in your life and commitment. I'm going to pull your clarifying card. This is a really easy read. I mean, it's just saying nothing but beautiful things for you. And you got the Ace of Cups. All right. The Aces talk about a, a renewal, a beginning, um, something that comes up. Okay. The Cups are very emotional, very loving. So something new, make, maybe you're having like an anniversary that's coming up that's very special that you can't wait to celebrate. Um, maybe you're going to hear great news. It could be, I mean, anything that's about love. Now, if there was going to be a pregnancy, I would see more as the ace of um, pentacles. But the cups also could be an indicator of that because they directly relate it to love and emotions. There could be a new, uh, some new emotions coming up. Maybe you are, you know, you're going to find out that you're going to take a trip together and it's going to be like a second honeymoon, or maybe you're going to go on a honeymoon. Maybe this person's going to propose. There is definitely something great happening. And I am trying to keep it very general as far as what the relationship is like, because if you are married, this could still apply to you. It is a confirmation that you have true love. And this card right here, that's something new. Hey, it could be a, a new a new opportunity for you to celebrate your love. Okay, maybe you're going to start a new life somewhere else. So, and if you're just starting a relationship, this totally applies as well. So, you know, Libra, this is awesome. You got an awesome spread. Your message of love is definitely true love. Lucky you. All right, I am going to go ahead and move on to my Aquarius. Put that away. I have not had such a beautiful spread in the last couple of weeks, Libra. Consider yourself fortunate and loved. All right, Libra, forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. All right, so Aquarius, maybe you need to let go of something. Maybe something has happened in the past and you need to heal and forgive yourself or forgive the other person. Let's find out. And I am so sorry, Libra, that I did not turn the cards around so you can see them. I'll try to remember next time. We are on Aquarius, of course, but I didn't do that for Libra. So Aquarius, I'll try to remember for you. All right, what kind of forgiving and learning are you going to do? Are you going to forgive and learn, or is the other person going to forgive and learn? What do you need to release, Libra? Uh, sorry, I'm on Aquarius, not Libra. Aquarius, what do you need to release, and what do you need to heal? Aquarius, this is for Aquarius, forgiving and learning. Aquarius, love message. Oops, there they go. Instead. Do one more Aquarius. Oh. Sorry, I'm going to do one more because half of those did not shuffle. There we go. That's a good one. All right, Aquarius, what is going on with you? What do you need to let go of? <clears throat> you know, a lot of times people forget that the best way to move forward from a situation is to forgive yourself and to allow yourself mistakes and to release and heal yourself. I tend to forget that, you know, that sometimes you deserve to be 
a little less harsh on yourself. And once you start learning to do that, that's when real true healing happens is when you allow yourself to make mistakes and you take it as a learning moment versus why did I do that? Why did I like just beating on yourself like that emotionally? So uh, let's find out Aquarius what it is that you need to let go of and hopefully you'll let go of it. All right, let's see. Let's go. Um, five of Swords, definitely something going on. Some decept deceptive um, feelings, fighting. Six of Swords, moving on into calmer waters. And you've got the Hanged Man. Okay, our Gemini got the Hanged Man. All right, so there is definitely something that is bothering you. And it could be something that's a little bit more in the distant past. It could be something in the present. But you haven't been able to truly let that go, Aquarius. Um, and it doesn't look, honestly, from this that the other person or the other parties are necessarily suffering at the moment. But I feel it's more of like... I want to say it's something that sort of haunts you a little bit. It's more of a haunting feel with this Five of Swords and Six of Swords. So you have a progression here, five to six, okay? And the five is just feelings of having to combat, fight, looking over your shoulder and not sure if you can let things go. And maybe you did something and you, you continued keeping your guard up and not understanding like the fact that, you know, maybe people aren't coming after you, but you kind of felt that way. And so you have not been able to move into more like more still waters. And this six of swords is the next step to the five of swords where you're fighting and you're bickering and you know, the fight's over, but you just can't seem to let it go. Like something's still bothering you. The next step into that progression is to take, and this shows, it shows a man, or, well, this is Tarot and Alice <laughs> in Wonderland, I mean. So it shows Alice stirring the boat somewhere else, like moving. But in the traditional tarot, in the Rider Waite, which is my absolute favorite tarot uh, deck, um, it shows a man taking a, a child and a woman across still waters, and he's rowing the boat. And it really, it really just indicates removing yourself from a situation and the baggage. It's considered like the baggage card, like take your baggage, move on, like let go and move on. Find better, stiller, more calm waters and start fresh, okay? And it looks to me that there's, there's a thing or two maybe in your past that you have not been able to do that for, like or with situation, maybe something that happened, maybe a feeling, something you just can't let go. And it's not necessarily saying something you did, but maybe something someone did to you and you're having a really hard time letting that go. And it's not that you live day to day thinking about it or that you beat yourself up every day over it, but sometimes people carry baggage and you know, you, you don't heal from something properly and it just like peaks its ugly head at certain times in your life and decisions that you make directly correlate with the fact that you have not healed or you're always on defense or you it it, it kind of molds your character a little bit when you when you're not able to fully let something go or heal from it and maybe forgive yourself for it so it looks like there is something there that is just you just haven't truly let it go and like I said earlier, and I think that's a very accurate description, is that certain things that happen in your life, if you don't take care of it and put closure to it and put it away and forgive yourself, let it go, or forgive the other person truly, it molds a little bit of your personality so that it affects you. And it may not directly affect you daily, but it does affect you to a point where maybe your behavior, it modifies your behavior and your the way you approach things, okay? So you got the hanged man as well. And the hanged man is all about learning to look at things from a new perspective, 
getting out of your comfort zone and finding, finding that one thing, that one aspect maybe of the situation that you could turn around or uh, find a different route to it or find the one thing that might help you. And, you know, it could be therapy. It could be just sitting down and laying it all out on the table for yourself and saying, hey, I'm going to be super honest with myself. This is what's bothering me. What are my choices here? And looking at things in a different perspective. That's why the hanged man hanged himself by a foot. Not so that he could suffer. It's not a suffering movement. Like he's, he's punishing himself. He is literally at his wit's end and wants something to end or wants something to begin or wants to figure something out. And he is hanging himself by the foot as a reflection time. Let all the blood rush to my head so that I can think better. I don't know how anyone can think that way, but apparently he can, because that's what the card means, is just looking at things from a different perspective, okay? I'm gonna pull a clarifying card, Aquarius, and see if there's anything else that comes up. And you got the Seven of Wands, which is also a feeling of having to defend yourself, defend your position, um, being on guard and like you feel you feel that people are still coming at you or that something's not right. Maybe someone's bringing things up from the past and you just, you're tired of it, but you just don't know how to let it go either. Um, maybe you're not being as clear about something and maybe someone else didn't get closure and it's just haunting you in some way. All right, but this confirms the fact that there is something that is still hanging around. And it's not as apparent as a day-to-day -day instance that happens, but you do find your feelings like being on high alert, high defense, and maybe you're a little jumpy at times about certain things. Maybe some things are very touchy for you, certain subjects, and you don't like um, people behaving a certain way towards you. Maybe it could be something that happened from when you were young, like, you know, something that happened to you in the way, I don't know, like being bullied or something when you were very young. So now, you know, as an adult, you feel very um, defensive about certain things. Maybe you don't like when people do certain things. So it's, you know, it definitely lends itself, this whole spread, to you looking deep within yourself and trying to figure out where in my life did I not heal properly? What can I do to make this not the case anymore? So Aquarius, for me, it's forgiving and learning. The love reading is about loving yourself enough to try to put some of these past hurts and past situations away and if it's something that happened when you were young or something that happened a long, long time ago, to not let it affect you now, okay? And we all have those things. We all have the baggage. But eventually you do want to get on that boat, that metaphorical boat, and move into better waters where you don't have to constantly be feeling those little waves and reminders of things that bother you. And the way to get there, Aquarius, is think about it and just try to figure out, truly figure out what it is that is bothering you and what you can do about it, okay? And the Romance Oracle suggests that you forgive and you learn from it. Because it doesn't sound like this is something that is hitting you on a day-to-day -day basis, like every day, every day. It's. It sounds to me like it's more of a of a, of a feeling that you have inside sometimes of not being able to let go of something or your reaction to certain things that you don't realize that you're reacting that way because of something that's happened in the past. And we all do that. You know, people have their defenses up about some people are sensitive about certain things because of what's happened in the past. Um, but it looks like it's enough to where it sometimes affects you to a point where you may want to look into it to help forgive and learn from it instead of having to deal with it in certain times of your life. We all have 
things that we need to heal and we all have experiences and things that we can forgive ourselves for. So, you know, Aquarius, don't beat yourself up. Just figure out what it is that you need to let go and maybe focus a little bit of time on letting it go and how to do that. So Aquarius, it's not about romantic love. It's more about inner love and loving yourself. So I hope that resonates for most of you. If it does not resonate, then try it again next week. I will do some readings next week. And um, I would appreciate a comment and a like if you enjoyed um, this video. And also, um, don't be afraid to suggest things. I, I really would like to know what types of reads you guys would enjoy. I like to do love readings because they seem to be very popular, but I could do readings for other things. And just let me know. Thank you for um, coming and visiting Miami Star Tarot. And I will see you later. Don't forget to give it a like. And subscribe if you want. Thank you. Bye-bye.